Hello everyone and welcome to my channel for some bonus content. So at this point I'm either on my way to the middle of nowhere or I am in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> but basically internet is terrible at my summer job so instead of having like a week with no content, don't mind me, I get really squiggly when I'm in a chair like this, um, I figured I would try to pre-record some stuff and um, one of those things is this. No, it's this. It's a choose your own adventure uh, Nintendo Super Mario Bros. Uh, Doors to Doom. So basically you go through and you try to get the Super Mario Brothers to the end without them dying. We'll see what happens. I uh, had these in my possession for a very long time. Did them back in the day when I was like eight or something. I don't know. It's been a long time since I've done them so it's not like I know how to get to the end this could go terribly. I'll also try to like, because there are some puzzles and stuff at some point, eep, 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 like that, so I'll try to um, pull them up and show you at that point. But yeah, let's just get into it, I guess. Eh? I'm really bad at reading out loud too, by the way, but we're doing this. All right, so Doors to Doom, we'll try, Mario and Luigi, we'll try. Monkey business. Go, screams Mario. The Mario Bros dash across the catwalks. With each step, the fragile bridges disintegrate behind them. They reach the far side simultaneously and skitter to a halt. That was close, pants Mario. Yeah, those collapsing bridges can be a real downer, replies Luigi. I love puns. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but puns and terrible jokes are just like food for my soul. Very clever, says Mario, but it may be your last joke. A giant hairy shadow moves over the scaffolding as Donkey Kong lumbers towards them, carrying the largest barrel Mario has ever seen. The two plumbers inch backward to the edge of the girder. They feel the wind against their backs and the emptiness of the long drop behind them. Princess Toadstool looks on from the bars of her cage. Any ideas? asks Mario desperately. What will happen to the heroic plumbers now? It's up to you to make the decisions that will get them through the hairy times ahead. No pressure. Then it's just got like... A title page and the other books that are out at this point and then it tells you how to play the game but I already know so let's just go on to that first page clunk Luigi awakens with a start he sits up in bed and rubs his eyes as his bedroom materializes through a sleepy haze it's like me every day I'll try not to interject in the corner is his newest invention a subsonic pipe to slimer the smell of salami the remains of last night's snack wafted up from the bedside table the room is in the back of Mario Bros plumbing shop in Brooklyn, New York. Along with his older brother Mario, Luigi is a master plumber, but Mario and Luigi have a secret life. They are the chief heroes of the magical mushroom kingdom. This world, below the surface of the earth, is populated by happy mushrooms and ruled by the Mushroom King and his daughter, Princess Toadstool. But a band of evil turtles and other monsters led by King Bowser Koopa is constantly trying to take over the kingdom. The Super Mario Bros have been called to the rescue many times. They usually take the quickest way there through the main pipe in their shop. Thud. A dull noise comes from the hallway. Luigi climbs out of bed and heads for the door. He knows what to expect when he reaches it. Mario is sleepwalking again. He's going to hurt himself, Luigi mumbles drowsily. Or worse, he adds, snapping awake. He'll break the new titanium pipe windsurfer I left in the hall. He rushes to the door. Whew, the windsurfer's okay, he says. But his brother is about to step into a pipe at the end of the hall. A pipe that wasn't there when they went to bed. Mario, stop, Luigi shouts. He leaps down the hall and grabs Mario by his overall straps, just as the short round plumber takes a final step into the pipe. Gotcha, exclaims Luigi. Turn to page 51. Beep, beep, beep. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. The word echoes against the pipe walls as Mario and Luigi tumble head over plunger through the darkness. The tall, thin Luigi lands with a thud on top of his sibling. Mario comes to with a groan as Luigi untangles himself and struggles to his feet. That's the last time I save you from sleepwalking, Luigi scolds. Did you get the number of that truck, mumbles Mario, staggering upright. The two brothers look around. They are in a square, dimly lit room made of grey stone blocks. The walls extend upward into darkness. There are no doors, pipes, stairways, or other escape routes visible. The sound of a squeaking hinge above makes both plumbers look up. High above them, well beyond jumping range, a door opens. Light pours into the chamber. In the doorway stands a short, round figure in a white lab coat. His oversized feet protrude from beneath the coat and extend beyond the edge of the doorway. Although the figure has the squat shape of a Goomba, his head is larger and rounder than the typical Goombas, making him look almost intelligent. Tufts of hair protrude from both sides of his otherwise bald scalp. 
but the beady eyes and large mouth leave no doubt that this is a member of the rogue mushroom clan. As Mario and Luigi stare up at the strange Goomba, he chuckles. Welcome, he says in a crackly little voice. I'm so glad you dropped in. Very funny, shouts Mario. Let me introduce myself, says the strange little mushroom. I'm Dr. Sporus von Fungenstein, the greatest scientist in the Mushroom Kingdom, and its next ruler. The Mario Bros stare in disbelief. The mad Goomba scientist continues. I plan to conquer all the mushroom worlds and make a few bucks on the side. What is this accent? <laughs> voice, what is this voice? Doesn't everyone, asks Mario sarcastically. But my plan is infallible, croaks Dr. von Fungenstein. I have an irresistible recipe for mushroom and turtle soup, which I plan to sell at a chain of fast food restaurants. There's real money in fast food. What am I doing? <laughs> Mario and Luigi can't believe their ears. Luigi squints up at the strange little creature. You think you can defeat the Mushroom King and Bowser Koopa and turn their subjects into fast food? Oh, I've already started, says the mad scientist. With my secret weapon, I can now make new passageways into all of the known mushroom worlds. My doors to doom machine can send the inhabitants of one world into another, thereby get rid of them forever. I've already taken care of almost everyone who can stop my plan. You two are the last, and now you've fallen into my little trap. Let me guess, says Mario, you brought us here to make plumber sauce to spice up your soup. Not exactly, cackles Von Fungenstein. With that, the lunatic scientist turns on his heel and slams the door. Crazed laughter echoes above them. The Mario Bros look at each other in disbelief as two doors materialize on the other side of the room. One door is white and the other is black. Then they take a closer look at the floor. It's made of alternating black and white square blocks. It looks like a checkerboard. This is where we blow this joint, Mario remarks, stepping onto the next block. He is immediately thrown back to his original position by a mysterious force. After some experimentation, the Super Mario Brothers discover that they can move across the checkered floor, but they have to jump in an L-shaped pattern. They can jump two squares up, and one square across, or one square up, and two across. They can move left, right, backwards, or forward, but they have to take turns moving. The only way to open either door is for both Mario and Luigi to land on the square in front of it. So here's the puzzle. I have to get Mario and Luigi to one of those doors. Ah, uh, it feels like pressure's on. Like, what if I just kill them with the first door? <laughs> Let's find out. Okay, so I decided to go with the black door because that was the door that I got both of them to first. So I get 10 points, so I'm keeping track of that over here, if that matters. I know that also there's some items. Sometimes there is a page in the back where you can keep track as well, but I figure I'll just do it at the side here for ease. So taking the black door, hopefully not immediately killing the Mario Brothers, and we're going to page 101. Luigi turns the knob and opens the black door. He stares into utter darkness. Mario joins him at the entrance. What do you think is out there? asks the younger brother. Before Mario can answer, the door slams shut behind them, shoving both plumbers into the dark chamber. I guess there's no going back. The floor abruptly disappears beneath them and they fall for several seconds. When they land, they're on top of a green wedding cake shaped hill. The grass on the hillside forms a wavy pattern. Luigi looks down at the ledges that form the layers below them. A hooded pink figure patrols the next ledge down. The figure is wearing a white mask and moving back and forth along the ledge in an unending cycle. Luigi points down at the pink sentry. A shy guy, he says to Mario. Let's jump over it. Geronimo! Mario and Luigi leap over the shy guy, landing on the lower level of the terraced hill. As Mario looks around, his expression grows gloomier by the minute. I think we've been here before, he says. I hope you're still dreaming, responds Luigi, because this sure looks like the entrance to Subcon, the land of dreams. The Super Mario Brothers get 15 points. Let me mark that down. Turn to page 85. So I didn't kill them with one door. So that's... That's good. That first door was not a door to doom. <laughs> Subcon, Mario says hollowly. Luigi looks around at the open, airy landscape. I always like Subcon, he said, admiring the blue sky, white clouds, green hills, and palm trees. The perfect place for vacation, adds Mario. I don't even mind the constant attacks from Shy Guys tweeters, Sniffits, and Ninjis, but that never-ending organ music drives me batty. As if on cue, the music changes pitch. Two red-clad Shy Guys approach the plumbers. Immediately, Mario bends down and picks up a clump of grass growing nearby. When he pulls up the grass, a smiling turnip emerges from the ground. Mario hurls the vegetable at the leading Shy Guy. Remember to eat your vegetables, he says coyly. The Shy Guy recoils from the impact of the turnip and collides with its companion. 
Both monsters bounce once, turn upside down, and disappear into the ground. Shy guys sure hate veggies, says Luigi, pulling another turn up from the ground. Do you notice anything different about them, asks Mario. Well, they were wearing sunglasses over their masks, and they had on Hawaiian robes, says Luigi. Nothing unusual, he adds. I know Subcon is strange, but surfer shy guys are ridiculous, mutters Mario. It's more like Surfcon than Subcon, <laughs> comments Luigi, smiling at his own joke. The two plumbers trot along a grassy path. They encounter more beach bum shy guys and several tweeters dressed in surfer shorts. As they get deeper into Subcon, the dream demons become more plentiful, but with the help of the local vegetable crop, the Mario Bros handle them easily. Luigi takes the lead while Mario trails behind, lost in thought. Finally, the red-clad plumber calls out to his younger brother. I remember a warp zone up ahead. If we can find a magic potion, we can take a shortcut to the end of Subcon. They approach a cliff and look over the edge. The warp zone is down there, says Mario. How do we get down, asks Luigi. We don't learn to fly until our next adventure. Without warning, a large group of black figures approach. They look like little devils with big eyes. They are moving very fast, directly towards the Mario Bros. A swarm of ninjas, exclaims Luigi. The ninjas are dressed completely in black, as usual. Except they are now wearing black bicycle pants emblazoned with yellow palm trees and red Reboom sneakers. I think they're supposed to be like Reebok sneakers. There are too many of them, says Luigi. Our only hope is to jump. The Super Mario Brothers get 20 points. That's exciting. Less exciting is this next little bit. If Luigi has the parasol, turn to page 89. Nope. If Luigi has no parasol, turn to page 118. Did I kill them? You! shouts Mario. I knew it wasn't safe, sighs Luigi. The two plumbers plunge through space. They land on the floor back in Dr. Von Fungenstein's small room. The doctor reappears in the door above them. I expected more from both of you, he says, shaking his head disappointedly. He pulls the large lever just inside the door. Mario and Luigi hear a grinding sound as the walls begin to close in on them. You guessed right about the plumber sauce, laughs the doctor, slamming the door shut. Game over. <laughs> well, doors to doom. They killed me. So, I might do this again. I got a whopping 45 points and killed Mario and Luigi within like three page turns. So, yeah. Get it. Guess it was the white door. Anyway, I thought that would be fun. Thought it would go on a little bit longer, but that's cool. See, as you can tell, I clearly have not read this for a long time, otherwise I would have remembered that a white door was the winner. So, hope you enjoyed that. I might do that one again. But I also have three other books, which I can kill the Mario Brothers in super fast, so I might do that. So, anyways, there, there's one video for, for my internet free time, but yeah, see? There's four of them. They're kind of fun. Sorry, Mario and Luigi. I'm sorry.